Hi guys, we're now going to continue our functions videos with part three, and this is inverse functions. So with inverse functions, as you might have guessed, it's just going backwards. So before in part one, we talked about a function is when you input something, uh, input, say in this case, x into the function, and you get the output y. So the inverse function is going the other way. So in this case, the, in, the output becomes the input, and the input becomes the output, because you're going backwards. And the simple use for that is we do the f to the power of minus 1x. That represents the inverse going the other way. Okay? So, based on this, this is a little trick that I do, makes things a bit easier. If the input is x and the output is y, I then change it, the input becomes the output. Okay, so what I'm going to do over here with this first example is I'm going to say, right, I'm going to say, instead of saying f of x equals 3x minus 1, I'm just going to call it y equals 3x minus 1 because I input x, I do the function, and I get y as the output. Okay, however, when you do the inverse, the input x and the output y are the other way around, which is what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to swap the x and the y round. So I'm actually going to have x equals 3y minus 1. Okay? So just go over that again. At the minute, I input x, I do the function, I get y. The inverse function, if I input x, I'm going to get y out. But obviously, the output is now the input, and the input is now the output. So what I do here is I just swap the x and the y the other way around. Once you've set that up, just rearrange it to make y the subject. So again, if you're unsure about how to rearrange equations, make sure you check out the rearranging equations video that I've done. But essentially, to get y on its own, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I'll have x plus 1 equals 3y. And then to get rid of the 3, I'll divide by 3. So I'll have x plus 1 divided by 3 equals y. So that's the inverse function. But don't leave it like that, because remember, we have to use uh, the symbol there, which is the f to the power of minus 1. x, the inverse function, just equals x plus 1 divided by 3. OK? And that's the inverse function. Let's have a go at this one then. So same thing, I'm just going to set that equal to y. Because if I input x, output y, so input x, do the function, I get y. Because I want the inverse function, I'm going to swap them around. So the input and so the x and the y swap around. So x equals 2y plus 3. And just as before, uh, rearrange it to make y the subject. So in this case, I'm going to get rid of the 3 by doing the opposite and taking 3 away from both sides. And to get rid of the uh, 2 there in front of there, so that means 2 times y, so I need to do the opposite and divide by 2. So x minus 3 divided by 2 equals y. And again, don't forget to write it out. The inverse function is therefore x minus 3 over 2. And last one for this page, before we have a look at some more complicated ones, is this one here. So again, just set this equal to y. Like so. Swap them round. So y becomes x, and x becomes y. And then rearrange it as you would do normally. So the first thing to do here is to expand the bracket. So four, uh, sorry, 6 times 4y is 24y. 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. So it leaves me with x equals 24y minus 6. Get rid of the 6 by doing the opposite and adding 6 to both sides. So x plus 6 equals 24y. And last step, divide by 24. So x plus 6 divided by 24 equals y. And that's your inverse function, which I'll just come back up here because I've run out of space. 
and write it next to the answer there. Okay, so x plus 6 divided by 24 equals y. Right, that's those three examples. Let's step it up a gear. So, in this case, we've got x squared plus 5. So, again, set it equal to y. Like so. Swap the x and the y round, because the input and the output are swapped round. So, x equals y squared plus 5. And then just rearrange it to make y the subject. So, first step there is to get rid of that 5 by taking away 5 from both sides. So, x minus 5 equals y squared. And then to get rid of the squared... Obviously, we square root because it's the opposite. So square root both sides. So square root of x minus 5 equals y. And again, don't forget to put it back up here. So here's the inverse. Uh, so it'd be the square root of x minus 5. So don't forget, once you've done that, to make sure you put it back into the inverse. Next one here, same steps. Set it equal to y. Swap the x and the y round and rearrange it. So I'm going to get rid of that minus 2 first by plusing 2 to both sides. So x plus 2 equals 3y squared. Then I'm going to get rid of the 3 by dividing by 3 both sides. So x plus 2 divided by 3 equals y squared. And just as before, to get rid of the squared, I'm going to square root both sides. I'm just going to come over here for the answer there. So that's the square root of x plus 2 divided by 3, and that's going to equal y. Don't forget to come back up here. Again, I'm just going to rewrite it because I'm going to run out of space a little bit. So the inverse function is the square root of x plus 2 divided by 3. So just again, don't forget to go back to the inverse function. Two more examples. So here we go, same process. Set it equal to y. Swap them round. So x equals 4y minus 3 over 5. And start to rearrange. The first thing we'll do is times both sides by 5. So 5x equals 4y minus 3. Then I'm going to add the 3 to both sides. So 5x plus 3 equals 4y. Then I'm going to divide by 4. So 5x plus 3 divided by 4 equals y. So if you're struggling with how to rearrange, make sure you check out that rearranging video. Don't forget to go back up here or rewrite it down here. But obviously, I've got no space here. And so the inverse function is therefore 5x plus 3 divided by 4. And the last one, which is this one here, is my favourite, it's very good, very juicy, is this one here. So again, set it equal to y. And swap them round. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to have x equals y plus 1 uh, divided by y minus 2. So whenever you're dividing by something like this, times by it. So times by y minus 2 to both sides, which will give me x y minus 2 equals y plus 1. Expand this bracket, so I'll have x y minus 2 x. I'm not going to draw the grid this time because I'm just going to run out of space. But you've seen me expand single brackets before. And then what you want to do is get all the y's on one side and everything else on the other side. So I'm going to take this y over to there. So I'm going to minus y to both sides. But I also want to take this minus 2x, get rid of this, because this hasn't got a y in it. So to get rid of that, I'm also going to plus 2x to both sides. What that leaves you with is xy minus y equals... 1, and then obviously they've got my plus 2x. Now to get y on its own, because it's currently tied up with the x, all you do is you factorise. So I'm going to take y out, which leaves me with x. Don't forget the minus 1 there when you factorise. Equals 1 plus 2x. And then 
you're doing y times this. So to get rid of that, you divide both sides. So I'm just going to come over here and say I'm going to divide by x minus 1 both sides, which leaves me with y equals 1 plus 2x. And I was dividing by both sides by this, so divide by x minus 1. And that's going to be your uh, final bit, because you've now got y to be the subject. So it'll be 1 plus 2x all over x minus 1 as the inverse function. So I'll just go over this one again. If you're dividing by anything, to make sure you times by it. So I'm going to, in this case, when we swap the x and the y's round, I times by y minus 2 both sides, which leaves me with... Oh, I should put in it. Uh, sorry, that's times by y minus 2 times by y minus 2, which leaves you with x times by y minus 2 equals y plus 1. Expand the bracket. You want to get all of the y's on one side, everything else on the other. So I brought this y over to this side by taking away y both sides. I want to get rid of this minus 2x. So I add 2x to both sides. So I'm left with all the y's on one side and everything else on the other. Once you've got that, you should be able to factorize the, the y out which leaves you with y brackets x minus 1. And then to get rid of that x minus 1, you divide by both sides, and that leaves you with your final answer. So hopefully that's explained how to do uh, inverse uh, functions. That's just the way I do it. I think it's quite nice because it links in with rearranging equations quite nicely, as long as you remember at the end to obviously say that equals the inverse function. Hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching, guys.